Well, hello, folks. It's Di North here. I'm out here at um, Camp WTF. We're getting everything put in order for clients. Um, and this morning I thought about it. I thought, well, I'm going to be out at camp all day today working. So I thought, well, I better bring my camera with and never know what you'll run into. <laughs> but then I got to thinking this early this morning while I was getting ready to head out. Well, I, I should start a morning fire in the wood stove and, and Blondie's hanging around the homestead today. She didn't want to come out and I thought, well, it's pretty chilly in the shack. It was, it was down to about 48 degrees in there. So I figured, well, I'll warm the shack up quick. Well, then I realized, well, my tinder and kindling box was just about empty, almost completely empty. And then a light came on. Well, I've got a sty story for that. Um, and I should do it when I get out to camp today. And so when I got out here, I started working. And I, right, right now where I'm at, um, I'm cleaning up and getting set up, getting the table set up and everything ready here at Hartrut and we'll be getting the roof on Hartrut. Um, also yesterday I was out here for the majority of the day and off behind me over here there I had to prepare three client sites. Um, they're all they're all prepped and ready to put our pods on, our client shelters. Um, so I got three sites all ready to put pods on. I'm not sure when I'm going to put those on, if I'll put them on tomorrow or the next day. Uh, we're supposed to have good weather for the next uh, four days, really good weather. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm going to try to get those pods up. Um, and uh, and as, of as of today, I've got three more sites I have to get prepped on the other end of camp over here. Um, I got to get those done, and then I also want to try over by the lean-to, off where the lean-to is at, there's an area that I want to get prepped because um, sometime later this spring or early summer, I want to um, construct a wigwam-style shelter, a dome-type shelter. Um, so I've got a lot to do. i got, I got a lot to do. Again, we, we didn't have any clients for this week, but that's not unusual. Um, people are a little shy about booking in the early part of May uh, because of the weather. It's so unpredictable. But I have to tell all those folks out there that were thinking about booking for this week, boy, you're missing out. It's beautiful. Daytime temperatures are in the low to upper 60s. Nighttime temperatures are in the upper 40s. Um, lots of sunshine, no clouds. It's just beautiful this week. Um, yeah, I'd hate to be out there thinking, well, I was going to book the first week of May, but I was afraid the weather was going to be so bad that it just wouldn't be enjoyable. Well, this would have been a heck of a week. I plan now probably Tuesday of next this coming week of um, coming out here and just staying put as if it's a regular regular camp week as if the clients were here um, so that I'm, I'm staying right here 24 7 and then I, I'll just there's so much there's never you never get everything done ever um, so I can come out here and spend a whole week by myself and do a lot of work out here. I can get a lot of things done. Um, so that's what I'm probably going to be doing. So let's get on with this sty story I have and why kindling and tinder is an issue. <laughs> okay. Now, when I lived out west with my family and we were living up in the back country, we lived in this old turn-of-the-century log, cedar log cabin, um, we were, we were um, about seven miles from the nearest utility of any kind. So, you know, it was 100% off-grid. And we didn't have electricity, you know, we didn't have a generator or anything of that sort. 
Well, all we had was a potbelly stove and a little sheep herder's cook oven, wood wood fired um, cook stove, and. Well, I went down to town every day to work, and I didn't realize that we had kind of run out of, almost totally out of kindling for firing up the stoves. So the kids one day came in the cabin. Well, this is while I'm down in town working. They come running in. They told their mother, they said, we found this stuff under this pine tree outside the cabin. Do you know what it is? And she looked at it. She says, no, I don't know what it is. And she goes, but you know, that looks like it would burn really good. Is, is there more of it? And they said, oh, there's a lot of it. And she said, well, go get it all and bring it in here. And so they took this great big Rice Krispie cereal box and they went and filled it full of this stuff that they found. Well, I came home from work that night, hiked up that mountain, came home, sit down to have my supper, and the ex-wife goes, well, I, she says, you know, you forgot to put up any kindling, and I said, oh, shucks, I said, I'll, after supper, I'll go out and I'll gather some up, and she says, you won't need to, because she says, we found this stuff underneath this pine tree outside next to the cabin, and she says, she said, um, I used a couple pieces, and it burns great. It burns excellent. And she said, so there's enough there that we've got at least a week or two's worth of kindling. And I said, well, what, what do you mean, stuff? What, what stuff? What are you talking about? She says, here, I'll show you. And she grabbed something from behind the wood stove, mind you. It's just right behind the wood stove out of this big cereal box and she throws it on the table in front of me it bounces on the table lands in front of me here what it is is it's a stick of dynamite that had flattened itself out because it had compressed because there were boards on top of it um, and the weight had compressed that stick down so that it was almost flat and very soaked with oil. The oils in the dynamite will soak through the paper. And still very viable as far as being an explosive. Well, I almost lost my supper. She went to reach for it and I said, no, don't touch it. I said, how much of this did you find? She said, well, we got a whole box full of it, and it's, I, I got it behind the wood stove because it seems like it's damp, so I'm trying to dry it out. <laughs> so she puts that box up on the table, and here that box has got a total, they were half sticks, and it's got a total of about, yeah, I, I, think, I think I counted 36 sticks. So here's 36 sticks of dynamite in this great big cereal box sitting on the dinner table right in front of me. And her and the kids got the biggest smiles on their face. They said, that makes good kindling, don't it, Dad? That, aren't, aren't you proud of us? I looked at all of them and I said, it's not a pride thing, I said. But thank God you're still all alive. And they said, why? I said, that's dynamite, folks. I said, is there any more of it out there? And they said, nope, we got it all. We got it all. I said, oh, thank goodness. So I took it, put it in the back of my pickup truck, and I said, I haven't been driving my truck to town because the road was bad. And I said, I don't care. I'm going to drive down into town tomorrow because I don't want it in my backpack. So the next day I drove down into town, and I went to local restaurant and I talked to the owner now he used to do dynamiting in a in, for um, a Sarco mining in uh, in the silver mines up in the Northwest and I thought he, he he advised me well enough to get rid of it how to get rid of it 
So I asked him to step outside with me, and he said, sure, and we stepped outside. I showed him that box full of dynamite in the back of my pickup truck. He turned on me, and he says, oh, my gosh, man, you back that truck out of here, and you go park that thing way down the block, and then you can come back to my restaurant. You aren't parking it out front of my restaurant with that stuff in it. I said, well, I need to know what to do with it. He says, move it away from here, come back, and I'll tell you how to get rid of it. So... Oddly enough, I, I had used dynamite in the past, but I, I didn't know really how to dispose of it other than to set it off. We, we used it for farming purposes. Well, I didn't realize that the best way to get rid of it is just to burn it. Um, this, it takes a blasting cap. It takes an impact for it to ignite. So um, just straight heat wouldn't wouldn't do it so we put it into this large wood pile we had in this big open field and we lit the wood pile on fire and let it burn up and it did it just burnt up it didn't explode but there you go when you're out of kindling and you go out looking around for some if you find what looks like a brown paper tube whether it be round or flattened Don't use it. It's not meant to go in your wood stove. And if you look real co close, those sticks of dynamite had it printed right on them. If you looked real close, you could see the printing on them that described what they were. And nobody took the time to try to read what was on the paper. So there you go. There's a Stye story, one that could have ended Stye's storytelling. Um, but all turned out well. <laughs> so, I got to get back to work, folks. I got a lot to do. Um, like to see you all out here at camp. It's beautiful. Like I said, those that didn't come out this week are missing out. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I love working out here, so this is, you know, I told everybody I took three days camping last week, and, and that, um, that was just for me, just to play, just to have fun, just to relax. Well, this isn't work to me. This is this is a good time. So I'm going to spend the week out here working and enjoying every minute of it. Poor clients that didn't show up this week. <laughs> Too bad. Okay. We'll let you go. Keep an eye out for future videos. This is Stein North, Wilderness Thriving Fundamentals. Would love to see you out here. Jim and Rory say hi. You all have a nice day. Bye-bye.